What have you learned about human beings, human nature, and the human mind from those who suffer from psychiatric maladies for those for whom this fabric is warped? And one thing we learn as biologists is that when something breaks, you see what the original unbroken part was for. And we see this in genetics, we see this in biochemistry. It's known that when you have a, a mutated gene, sometimes the gene is turned up in strength or turned down in strength, and that lets you see what it was originally for. You can infer true function from dysfunction. And this is a theme that I thought needed to be shared and needed to be made communicable to the to the lay public, to everybody, people who, which is, I think, uh, almost all of us who think and care about the inner workings of our mind, but who also care for those who have been suffering, who have mental health disorders, who face challenges. But then more broadly, it's a very much larger story than the present. There's a a story to be told where the protagonist really is the human mind. And that was one thing I wanted to share as well in projections, is that broader story, but still anchored in the moment of patients, of people, of experiences of the moment. Is there a clear line between dysfunction and function, disorder and order? This is always debated in psychiatry, probably more so than any other you know, medical specialty. I'm a psychiatrist, I'm, I treat patients still. Uh, I see acutely ill people who come to the emergency room where there's no doubt that this is not something that's working well, where the manifestation of disease is so powerful, where the person is suffering so greatly, where they cannot continue as they are. But of course it's a spectrum and there are people who are closer to the, to the realm of being able to, to work okay in their jobs but suffer from some small dysfunction and everywhere in between. In psychiatry, we're careful to say we don't call it a disease or a disorder unless there's a disruption in social or occupational functioning. But of course, psychiatry uh, has a long way to go in terms of developing quantitative tests. We don't have uh, blood draws. We don't have imaging studies that we can use to diagnose. And so that line ultimately that you're asking about between order and disorder, function and dysfunction, it's operational of the moment. How are things working? Can we just like linger on the terms for a second? So this uh, disease, uh, dysfunction, how careful should we be using those words? Can we just, even in this conversation, um, from a sort of technical perspective, but also a human perspective, how uh, quick should we be in saying that schizophrenia, uh, depression, autism, as we kind of go down this uh, the, the uh, across the spectrum of different maladies, like to, to just to use yeah. the word dysfunction and, di mm -hmm. and disease, I would say to give our, ourselves license to capture the whole spectrum. Let's say disorder, because that that captures truly, I think, the essence of it, which is we need to talk about it when it's not working, when there's disorder, and that that's the fairest and and uh, you know most uh, inclusive term to use. So is it fair to assume that basically every member of the human species suffers from a large number of disorders then? Well, and we just have to pick which ones are are uh, debilitating and uh, for each person. You know, if you if you look at the numbers, there are uh you know, if you, if you look at how our our mental health disorders are currently defined, you can uh look at population prevalence values for all these disorders and you can come up with estimates that uh, somebody will have a lifetime prevalence of having a psychiatric disorder that approaches 25% or so. And so that's, and in some studies it could be more, some studies it could be less. Now, what do we do with that number? What does that mean? And in some ways that's the essence of what I was hoping to approach with uh, the book is to reflect on this spectrum that exists for all the disorders. There is, and, and taking nothing away from the severity and the suffering that comes at the extreme end of, of these illnesses, but nearly every one of them exists on a spectrum of severity uh, from nearly functional to completely dysfunctional, life-threatening, and, and even fatal. And so that, that, that number, 25%, more or less, it doesn't capture uh, that, that spectrum of, of, of uh, severity.
to look at that number, where do those numbers come from? Is it self-report? Is it people who show up and say, I need help? Is it somebody else that points out that person needs help? Uh, or is it like estimates that even go beyond that for people who don't ask for help but are suffering quietly uh, alone? When you look at self-report numbers, that, that then those numbers get even higher, beyond 25% or more. Uh, those The most rigorous studies are done with structured psychiatric interviews where people uh, who are trained in eliciting symptoms uh, carefully do complete psychiatric inventories of, of individuals. And these are uh, time-consuming, laborious studies that are not often repeated. When they're done, they're, they're done well. Uh, but very often you'll see a report of something in the news of a very high number for some disorder or or symptom. And very often, if it's shockingly high, that's coming from a self-report of, mm -hmm. of a person. And so that's another another issue that we have. Again, take nothing away from the severity and reality and, and biological nature of these disorders, which are very genetic, very, you know, we, we understand that these are very biological. And yet, we lack right now the lab tests and the blood draws to make the diagnoses. We'll, we'll talk about it, just how biological they are, because it's a that too is a mystery. I mean, just, you know, in terms of from a perspective of how to probe into the disease, how to understand it, how to help it. So some of it could be neurobiological, some of it could be uh, just the the dance of human emotion and interaction, and the it's like. Uh, it will, uh, it is love when it works and is love when it breaks down uh, biological or is it something else? 